So believe it or not, old cans of fish can be worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to center in on a topic that may sound pretty screwy, but hang in there. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about if you hang on for just a few moments here. Now, this is a can of salmon. If this can was old enough, they would be worth some money. The whole value in these is historical. Obviously, this can here isn't old enough. It doesn't carry much of a value. Why would something like an old can or even the label from the can be worth anything? Well, they weren't made to last. Most people aren't going to waste a can of food that they spend good money on. It, it just doesn't happen. So in most cases, the food is eaten, the can's discard, recycled, thrown in the dump, whatever, and it's gone. So when a label or a can turns up, they're extremely rare, depending, again, on how old they are. Cans turn up in attics and basements all the time. The father of the household may have used them for nuts or bolts or something like that. So tons and tons of cans do turn up. You get the right kind, of course, the value is there. Now here's a perfect example. This is a mackerel label from about 1878 through about 1884. And this is from a company called Thurber. Thurber made a ton of things. In the time frame when this label was put out, 1875 to 1884, Thurber pretty much covered the market. They canned everything. They would be in every store out there in the market. So this is just one of those brand names that I always look for. Now, of course, as I said, they do turn up still. Basements, attics, estate sales especially, old barn sales, garage sales. I see them on shelves quite often, so they are out there. Even common things like a Campbell's soup can, if it's old enough, early enough, can be worth some really good money. Andy Warhol designed it, so you might even run into some promotional pieces that he handed out at some of his art shows. So cans in general are almost always worth some decent money. Now, I run into the labels far more than I run into the cans. Now, somebody may ask, well, how do I know this is a label? Well, the cans that they use the labels on are about the same, so this label would actually fit on here. Now, this is only half of a label. It's missing the back half. Somebody had saved the most important part, the graphics on it. If I had the entire label, I would have gotten more than the 75 bucks plus shipping I got for this one. So this one sold for 75 bucks, and it's only part of a label. Company name has something to do with it. The size, again, this is the same size as the label that I have here. They still have mackerel cans. Salmon and fish have been canned since the 1870s, or even before that point. Cans have been around for 150 years or something like that. So it's a huge area. There's tons of opportunity to find them. It doesn't matter what section of the country you live in either because cans have been across the gambit. Anywhere you could think of, you can find cans. Now, it doesn't even have to be the entire can if you run into a can. People will even buy an empty can with no label on it just to put a label they have on it to have a display piece. People will even take and buy some of these labels and then mount them on a modern day can just for display purposes as well. So there's a ton of people that collect these and not just as a tin can collector or a label collector, but there's people who collect fish. One of the biggest tin cans in general would be ones tied to the oyster market. Those are always the highest. Some of those can sell for three or four thousand dollars. We're going to show you just a few here related to fish, related to the label that I have here, just to give you a little idea on the more common stuff. And again, I'm going to show you common stuff, stuff that was an everyday staple in stores 100, 120, 130, even 150 years ago that still occasionally turn up, believe it or not. Now, we're just going to look at a few listings just to give you an idea. And we're just looking at fish. It can be anything. I've seen cans of peas with awesome graphics that have sold for some phenomenal money. Labels from peas, beans, fruit, baby food, anything could sell for some decent money. Again, because these were all meant to be thrown away. No one in their right mind would have wanted somebody or even created these items to be safe. That's not what these were about. It was to attract attention so that somebody would buy the product and eat the food and come back and get it. Now here's a salmon can, again, from about the same time as the label that I just showed you. So they do show up, but this has the can. 99% of the time the food is gone and you'll just see the top off. 
Some people would have used it for a drinking glass if they didn't have money. Some people would have stuffed stuff in it, a catch-all can or something. So again, there are many reasons why these show up. I've even seen them wedged in attics and basements in walls after a house was built. Somebody was working on the house, ate whatever was in the can, and just shoved it in the wall as opposed to trashing it out. This one went for almost $800 with 50 bids. And this is just a common everyday can of Alaskan pink salmon. Just an interesting, interesting item. Yet another one, and this one has a ripped up top. It's not in the best condition. Label's still intact, and it's the right label it does appear to be. And this one here sold for $676. Canoe brand. There's tons of brands. Most of them come from Alaska. Every type of fish, the main source to get those fish, that's usually where they were canned at. They, the icing and refrigeration wasn't as available, obviously, back then as it is today. So you had to process the food in the proximity of where it was harvested or, or caught. So if you're like a produce person, wherever they would have grown produce back in those days, specific types and things, that's where you're going to find a can being produced for those. So there's regionality to most of these, at least to where you would find them. Most people would find salmon in Alaska back in those days. So a large chunk of cans of salmon you'll find from Alaska. Now here's yet another one, and this is from the same basic area. This is from San Francisco. Now, obviously, Alaska was not a state at this time, so there are some issues with it going back and forth. Cans will be rarer from areas like that as well. This one from San Francisco from this time frame is fairly early. Some of these would have been brought in on a boat, caught out at sea. This one says Bering Sea, but they would have been caught out at sea, and then the port in San Francisco would have had a canning facility. Cannery Row is something I think about when I run into cans or labels from them. Yet another one, Columbia River Salmon. Usually there'll be a location marked on the can of where the fish was caught. There won't be any like dietary needs or any information like that. There won't be any guarantee. It usually doesn't say the contents other than the label on the front of the can. That's it. That's it. And you can see how it was opened. It was cut open from the bottom there. Typical what you may see. The person who sold this probably ended up bending it back. Again, these are display pieces. People are going to set these on a shelf. They'll clean them up a little bit. You can wax the metal part to make them shine a little bit to stop further erosion. That's one of the things that I see people do on these. This one went for $420 with five bids. Now here's a really nice label on this one, the Ensign brand salmon. Again, most of these are going to come from Alaska, as this one does as well. It's been opened. It's just an empty can. It was just probably found in an old barn or a shed, a garage, a basement, or an attic, or behind a wall. That's literally where most of these show up. This isn't something you'd find at a thrift store. This is not something that you would find at the bins. Um, this is something literally you're going to have to hunt for a little bit, but they are out there. Now, we've made thousands of dollars off of these sorts of things. Now, I just showed you an extremely small slice of canned goods sections. There's a ton of canned goods, a ton, and it doesn't even have to be food related. If it's a vintage can of oil from the turn of the century, last century, some of those can go for a thousand bucks or better. Food, though, is one of the higher priced ones, right up there with some of the oil cans. Oysters takes the top of the stack there for the highest value tin can I've ever seen is an is a oyster one. Donald Duck coffee, Donald Duck uh, orange juice. There's a ton of characters tied to these as well. There's a ton of other characters that were used just to advertise canned goods, canned goods in general. Anything like this that was meant to discard is something that would be highly collected these days and would usually carry a pretty darn good value, again, because they weren't meant to be saved. A lot of the cans that were made before World War II or even before World War I were brought forward for metal drives for the war effort here in this country. So a ton of them were discarded at that point. Any type of metal you may have sitting on a shelf somewhere at your home, you turned in for the war effort. Even kids were, were bringing it up, going door to door, trying to get as many cans or any type of old metal that may be sitting around the house. So they're even scarcer after those two events. It's something I always look for. There isn't a place that I go that I don't at least look for some sort of canned good. Even some of the modern day cans, you would be surprised, still may carry a value because they're discontinued items. So in general, cans of any type 
should always be on your list of items to at least look into. That doesn't mean every single old can that you run into is going to be worth a fortune. It doesn't mean every paper label that you run into is going to be worth a fortune. One other thing, as I've shown you with this one here, the condition doesn't necessarily dictate that it's not worth anything. So this is only half of a label. It's still sold for 75 bucks plus shipping. I've sold labels, just this much of them, just the half of it here, for three and four hundred dollars before. So again, it's not necessarily that you have to have the can or you have to have a perfect label. Even labels that are missing chunks, if the can's present, they can still go for hundreds of dollars. Even just the label without the can and still missing a few chunks can still sell for some pretty decent money. I would honestly check out your garage, your attic, your basement now. Even if the can is from the 60s, it could still carry a pretty decent value if it's something scarce, something unique. A vintage original Campbell's soup can from the very first runs of those can sell for some pretty good money as well. So in general, things that were meant to be thrown away, not collected, not saved, can carry a value just because there aren't as many of them left anymore. They weren't saved to start with except for other reasons. A can save for nuts, a can save for bolts. You set it there, you forgot about it, and no one ever went back into the shelf or worried about discarding it. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. dull and commonplace occurrences of day-to-day -day living, one thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Colt 45 Malt Liquor.